A lot of buzz has been swarming around Marvel's Spider-Man 2 from Insomniac Games. Now, when I release this video, the game has not quite come out yet. It's about a month out. I wanted to talk about something interesting because the senior creative director, Brian Intihar, at Insomniac Games, detailed a bunch of new world building stuff that they are adding into Marvel's Spider-Man 2. And I think a lot of other videos have already broken this stuff down very well. They've talked about some of the things that are taking advantage of the PS5 infrastructure, like adding Queens and Brooklyn, having such a huge world, obviously the web wing mechanics, and this is all really cool stuff. I wanna talk about a little more when the game comes out, but something that a lot of people are not really thinking about, or I guess I should say publicly talking about right now, is what this means for Marvel's Wolverine. Now that game is obviously coming from Insomniac as well, but I think a lot of people were looking at that game in the scope of what Marvel's Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man Miles Morales were able to be. But now that we've seen the full scope of what Insomniac is delivering with Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and just how impressive it is, I think this is a lot of good news for the upcoming Wolverine game. Obviously the date is still not announced on that, so there's plenty of time for the creatives at Insomniac to work on it, but I thought it was really interesting to think about and look at in the context of what they are adding to Marvel's Spider-Man 2. So today's video is gonna be a little bit shorter. I actually mean that this time. I know I can go on and on about these things that excite me, but gonna be a little bit shorter of a video, and if you enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I cover all kinds of pop culture stuff, especially nerdy stuff, superheroes. I've gotten into covering Metal Gear Solid, James Bond, obviously Marvel and DC Comics properties, Assassin's Creed, so we have a fun time on this channel, and we have a secondary channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through a lot of games podcast style and have fun hanging out with you there, which is in the description down below if you want to check it out. But something I love about this game and what they have been revealing is that they have expanded on almost every single mechanic that they introduced in previous games. Everything down to even car chases is actually more in-depth the world has almost doubled in size with the addition of Queens and Brooklyn. There are now interactable AR lenses in Spider-Man's masks, both Spider-Men, I should say, and an upgrade system that is a lot more in-depth. And all of these things are really cool because, yes, they are exciting for Marvel Spider-Man 2, obviously. Everybody's excited for that that's into these games, but they also mean very, very big things for the capabilities of what Marvel's Wolverine game from Insomniac is going to be able to reach. So here's a great example of that too. Obviously we saw a very fluid and well done combat system in Marvel's Spider-Man 1. So a lot of people were looking at that and saying, okay, well obviously if Insomniac is making this Wolverine game, they're gonna be capable of recreating that, right? I mean, they're gonna be capable of doing that in the Wolverine game, but now with Wolverine's claws. To what extent, we don't know, will it be overly a bloody, you know, like Wolverine often is, will it not? We're not entirely sure yet the direction they'll go, but Insomniac is very, very much driven by trying to represent the core heart of what makes a character who they are. I know there are criticisms around Insomniac, I understand that, with some of their games, just like there's criticisms of anything. I've made videos before, I've talked about all the things I love about their games, even some of them I don't like, that's that's how anything's gonna be. But at the end of the day, they are very focused on bringing the heart and soul of the title characters to life. Maybe you have a problem with a side character, maybe you have a problem with a mission structure, but at the end of the day, when you're playing as Miles, you truly do feel like you're playing as Miles Morales, a very fleshed out, three-dimensional version of this character, and same with Peter Parker. Those were things that were already exciting for Marvel's Wolverine. We were already knowing, okay, this studio has proven that they can deliver that. They've proven a lot over the years. They've proven that they can deliver it in Ratchet and Clank games, but now they've proven they can do it with a big licensed IP like Spider-Man. But of course, one thing that they are adding a lot to in this game is those character dynamics. You're now able to switch between Miles and Peter and both have unique interactions with the world around them. So for example, there's going to be some missions that actually are designed for Miles, some that are designed for Peter, and some that can be played by either of them. Now, do I really expect there to be multiple playable characters in Marvel's Wolverine in the first game? 
Uh, I don't know. It always could happen. Maybe you could have something like Logan, James, or you could have, you know, as well, his daughter, Laura. I would assume something like that would be saved for a later game. Could happen, I don't know. But my point is that a mechanic that was already very well introduced in the original game has been widely expanded on. And so now, expectations for Marvel's Wolverine I think within reason, you know, within reason, let's not be insane about it, are a little higher. When you deliver something so incredible, when you deliver something that people really love, and then you say, now I'll do it again, and you make it even bigger and you expand those mechanics, it is such a good sign for things to come. I think one of the things that excites me the most about the possible future for Marvel's Wolverine is something they showed in the new expanded Marvel's New York trailer, for Marvel Spider-Man 2, which was the suit customization. So there's going to be over 60 suits in this game, just in the base version of the game. And also there's going to be basically 200 variations if you look at the suit customization system. So you can actually mess around with these suits as well and change some details and colors on them. Originally, we were looking at Marvel's Wolverine. I know I'm saying originally a lot, but just hear me out. Originally, we were looking at Marvel's Wolverine and we were saying, okay, they did a great job with comic book inspired and movie inspired outfits. They were doing fantastic with this, right? Okay, well, they did a great job in the first game. Wow, now they did a great job in Miles Morales. So clearly they, they're gonna do a great job in Wolverine. But now there's an even further expanded version of that costume system that not only has more costumes available in the base game of Marvel's Spider-Man 2, but the ability to customize and change details about those costumes. See what I'm saying? So the bar goes up even higher. Now I will say, can we go into Marvel's Wolverine and realistically expect every feature from the Marvel's Spider-Man games to appear? No. For example, Wolverine's probably not gonna fly. You know, I mean, they're obviously going to do things that fit the character. It's not like because they gave web wings to Peter and Miles that all of a sudden Wolverine's gonna walk around with a symbiote suit on and web wings and be flying around. That's not my point. My point is not, let's all go into Marvel's Wolverine and expect a reskinned Spider-Man. Not my point at all. My point is, I think the bar was already set very high with what they were able to deliver. And as they show more and more and more of Marvel's Spider-Man 2, we are seeing that they are putting the bar for themselves even higher. Combat expanded. Costume collection expanded. World interaction expanded. Traversal expanded. I think these are really, really cool things that they're doing here. And I do think that when game studios, when movie studios, when even independent creators do really interesting and fun things that are going above and beyond, those things should be celebrated, right? It is so often in today's world where we see a game series stagnate or we see game series not push themselves as far as they can. And even some of those series are still fun. You know, there are game series out there that could be better, that could do more, that could expand further, but they are still enjoyable. You still have a fun time with them. You still leave and you're like, okay, well, I really like this. I wish they would do a little more with this, but I, I really enjoy it. It's the same with when you watch a movie and you say, well, that felt kind of like a B plus. I feel like it could have been an A minus all the way to an A plus, but it felt like a B plus. Hopefully they do a little more next time. Except with Insomniac, it's like we never have to feel that way. You know, we never have to go into Insomniac games and say, ah, oh, they could have tried harder. They could have done way better. I don't really think that there's much like that in their games, and I think that's really awesome. Now, will I have things that I don't like about games? I'm sure I always will. You know, I, I like to look at the good and at least to me, what is the bad? You know, I like to make videos like the five things Marvel Spider-Man did right, or five things it did wrong, or, you know, five ways Miles game was better or five ways Peter's game was better. You know, I made all those videos because I like to look at both sides of these things. It doesn't mean I hate them. It just means, hey, you know, here's some stuff that from my perspective as a player and somebody who has loved video games for decades, here's kind of what I think. That's how I like to look at these games. And looking at this, no matter how the final product of Marvel's Wolverine comes out, I'm pretty sure right now, from everything we've seen, that it's going to be a lot of fun. This is a lot of good news for Insomniac as a company. It's a lot of good news for their future projects because they keep showing, we are gonna show up, we are gonna try our best, we're gonna do the best we can, 
And will everything be perfect? No, not everything in life is perfect, but it's going to be the best effort that we can give and then we will learn from those things and improve in following games. That's something I wish more series and more creators were willing to do. Learn from mistakes or learn from missed opportunities or even learn from their successes and say, what were our strengths? Let's expand them. Maybe what were things that weren't as strong? Maybe they were weaknesses or maybe they were just the least strong. How do we improve those as well? Insomniac is doing that with Marvel Spider-Man 2 and I think it's great to see because it's an attitude that I wish would be more prevalent in this industry and in the entertainment industry in general and in, in the world in general. Too many people are not willing to learn from mistakes or strengthen their weaknesses or anything like that. Too many people are just kind of doubling down. Too many game studios are doubling down and kind of saying, well, criticism is irrelevant. We are what we are, take it or leave it, we'll succeed without you. And instead of cashing in and being lazy, because Spider-Man as a game would sell either way, they could re-release the original game and essentially reskin New York, and that game would still sell. But they're not doing that. They're putting in that extra effort, going the extra mile, and I think it's very exciting for the future of what they have to offer. So anyway, this was hopefully a little bit shorter of a video than normal. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. I do read the comments at least as many as I can out of the ones I get. Uh, you know, maybe say something nice. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. But. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe as well, and check out our other channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through a lot of games together and have a fun time. We actually played through Miles Morales' Spider-Man. I know my wife and I want to play through the original Peter Parker game, the PS5 version, I guess remastered, but we haven't gotten to it yet, so that will be very fun over there. I hope to see you there and hang out with you. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.